What will an individual learn when they are acquiring the CWAP? CWAP is the Certified Wireless Analysis Professional. Some people say this is the most challenging of all of the certifications. I personally think it depends on how you go through the track. A lot of people do CWAP right after CWNA, and that's perfectly fine. And other people do CWNA, then CWSP, then CWDP, and finally CWAP. I think CWAP is a lot easier if you go that route but it might make CWDP and CWSP slightly more challenging because you don't have the knowledge from CWAP yet. So it's completely up to you how you go through the track. I would encourage you to look at the objectives for all of the certifications. After you get your CWNA, look at CWSP, CWAP, and CWDP. Which one are you already most prepared for? Maybe that's the first one to go after. You just fill your knowledge gaps and you're ready for that certification. Or you can look at it and figure out for yourself and based on your experience, what is the best path through? So you'll see a lot of recommendations out there from different people. And I always hesitate to say, here's the way to do it. Now, the way I would do it is I would do CWSP right after CWNA for a simple reason. I love security. It's a passion and interest of mine. So that's where I'm going to go. And then I would do CWDP and then finally CWAP. That would be my path, but other people prefer CWAP first. And why do they say that? Why do I say you might do it last? Well, remember, I said you might do it last to make it a little bit easier. They say do it first because even though it's a challenging thing, you get a lot of knowledge that helps with the other ones. So what is all of that saying about CWAP? CWAP is full of technical knowledge, very technical details about how 802.11 operates wirelessly, what we call the physical layer, the radio frequency. How does that actually work? How does the information get, it's called encapsulated, put into a storage container that can be moved across the network that we call a frame? So how do these frames work? How are they structured? How are they formatted? What types of frames are there? What does it mean when I see a certain frame type on the network? All of this kind of knowledge is in CWAP. Additionally, CWNP uh, puts into CWAP a focus on uh, spectrum analysis. So what that means is I'm just looking at the energy in the radio frequency space. So there's energy around us all the time in, in our modern world today. You can hardly go to a place where there's not some radio frequency energy around you. Uh, if your cell phone works, there's radio frequency energy around you for sure. But even when your cell phone doesn't work, you might be in the middle of nowhere in, say, West Virginia, where I took a vacation some time back. And your cell phone doesn't work, but guess what? At the campground I was at, they had Wi-Fi. So now that RF was there. So it seems like we can't get away from it nowadays. There's RF somehow, somewhere, everywhere. And a spectrum analyzer is just looking at that energy. It doesn't care what kind of protocol is in use, whether it's Wi-Fi or your cellular devices or something else. It just looks at the energy. Well, you learn how to use this tool called a spectrum analyzer so that you can learn things about an environment. What kind of interferers might be there? And are those interferers strong enough to actually cause problems for your Wi-Fi network? So very important skill set when it comes to troubleshooting and analysis is spectrum analysis. By the end of CWAP, you literally know when device A wants to send 13 different messages to some server on the internet through the Wi-Fi network, exactly what are all of the individual communications that take place to make that happen. You're a real expert in how the protocol works when you master CWAP. So it is a foundational knowledge set that is just essential to become a master troubleshooter.